That took forever. So Jerry McCream has fallen asleep. Once the pairs have been a bit bored, any right? Let's take a little ooh, key. Take all this tunic rubbish off. A ladder. Need a ladder to escape. Well, we've learned about Sir Jeremy Cream's Christmas adventure. Now, Cecil, would you tell me about your Christmas adventure this morning, please? Thank you. Well, you know full bloody well what happened. No, Cecil, it's Christmas. You can't pretend to be miserable now. Oh, we're not doing that. <gasps> On one recording of this, um, we pretended we'd had the most miserable Christmas day in the world. We had a huge argument, a pretend argument, certainly. For dramatic effect. But rubbish, wasn't it? Really brought me down, Cecil. Really made me grumpy. Like, it genuinely did make me upset, even though we'd all scripted it and planned it out a bit. Yeah, I didn't like it, so we deleted it. And then, it just one thing after another. Now this morning, Paul, as you know, you woke me up at six o'clock with your torch shining it in my face. I remember Margaret's face. He'd come into the room with a stocking in his hand. I did. <laughs> Where's the book? I want to know what quest I'm on, Cecil. So. Grumpel, that's what I've done. Ice spikes and kill Jack Frostingtons. And I said, Cecil, can I, can I open my stocking in bed? And I got in bed with mum and dad. Um, which was maybe a little bit inappropriate for... I'm, um, what, 38 now? It might be a little bit inappropriate, but I don't think it's too inappropriate. It's Christmas. Oh, excuse me. It's Christmas. What, just bust nothing? If you can't sit in bed with your parents and share a festive stocking, when can you? And again, as I said, Paul, it would be fine if it wasn't six o'clock in the morning and you kept us up every night. I wake up every hour on the hour, checking to see if Father Christmas has been. I do a recce of the entire house, top floor to down floor, look for presents. Oh, that's lava. Um, stockings. Uh, if any advent calendars have been refilled, you never know. Um, and, I, you know, you've got to. That's the whole point, Cecil. The festivity of the season has got to be done. Yes, but I'm tired. Anyway, that's what happens, Cecil. Um, I'll let you get back to sleep after I open my stocking. Yes. Did you like your stocking present? It was nice, Cecil. I like the stationery set. Oh, bouncing tons. I like the stationery set. You got me. It was like, um, well, never mind. We'll tell, tell the ladies and gentlemen about that after. Yeah, and then what happened? I went back to sleep till 11 o'clock. That's right. That's when I got back up. Once I know Father Christmas has been and there's presents, um, then I'm fine. Uh, but until then, I just get so anxious. Yes. Uh, what? Uh, Jack Frost, kill him, Cecil. Right. Oh, it's a Jeremy. Oh my Christ! You've no idea what this looks like to me. This is horrendous. What the hell? What the actual genuine hell? Being attacked by giant presents. I don't know if this is sexy or not, Cecil. Uh, uh, um. Baby's first sword, that can't be good, can it? Must be wooden. Get off me. Oh, it bounced him back, though. Shittington Tittingtons. Oh, it's bad. It is absolutely terrifying. It's like something out of Doctor Who. Doctor Who's on today, Cecil, when she becomes a woman. Yes. How do you feel about that, Paul? I feel sexy about that, Cecil. Very sexy. I'm sure there's a lot of um, Doctor Who fans who now feel they can finally admit that they want to sleep with the Doctor Who. Cecil, stop it. That's not nice. There's so many of them, Paul. There's too many. I think I'm going to be having flashbacks to this for quite some time. Oh. 
Iron sword, I'm breaking my... Where's it? I've dropped it. Oh. Where's my sword gone? Hey! Hey! This is like being back at school. Just getting buffeted around by big bullies. Oh! Oh! So then, after 11 o'clock, we sit round and we open presents. Um, I open presents from Margaret. We do it one at a time. There's lots of order. I like to be um, regimented in it. I got a beautiful um, set of... Um, oh, Lynx Africa. It got some, some kind of spray in it. And a body wash. And uh, a manly, powerful soap. I think that were meant for me, Cecil. Probably. You do stink. You should, could use it. I probably will, Cecil. Because you put everything in the bathroom anyway. Oh, my sword's gone. And then when we've opened our presents... What's your best present, Cecil? Someone got me um, a print of a cavalry charge um, painting that I really think is beautiful. <laughs> Who was that, Cecil? <laughs> I think that was from you, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah. I stole it. What? I stole it from that auction. When we went to that auction house, um, we were just looking around. I just rolled it up and put it down my trousers. They never find out, Cecil. Oh, you nasty bastard. Why did you borrow £30 off me to buy me a Christmas present then? Shut up. No, be rude. It's Christmas Day. I'll tell Father Christmas on you. Right. Well, I don't really give a shit, Cecil, because he's already been. I've already got my presents. Well, why would I care if I've been naughty or nice? You know, it ticks over from 1st of January. You've got essentially a week's dispensation to do whatever the hell you want and you won't get put on the naughty list. Because you know, he's not going to take it back, is he? We'll see. <laughs> and then my Margaret went and did her wifely duties and cooked for us. Yep. <laughs> it was horrible, wasn't it? So dry. She put the turkey in at about, what, eight in the morning? Cooked it till two. Yes, that's a reasonable time to cook, Paul. Is it, though, Cecil? I've literally no idea. No, me neither. Just want nice. Ten minutes per pound per pound plus ten minutes. What? And that's the rule, isn't it, for cooking turkey? I don't know what you're talking about. So, Jeremy? Please don't talk to me. I'm having quite the freak out. Quite the freak out. I can't feel my legs. I can't even see my legs. You've got a virtual reality headset on, Sir Jeremy. Don't worry. Where his voice was coming from? Sounds like Cecil. Sounds like Cecil talking to me. <laughs> it is Cecil talking to you, Sir Jessa. He calls me that. I'll rip his legs off. I pay to have him murdered. I can do, I'm rich. I do what I want. I want to kiss the Marcus of Bath. So, Jeremy, we can hear you. What? Marcus of Bath. Shut up. What? I love him. Bearded. You don't know what you're saying, Sir Jeremy. What? Just, just watch, Sir Jeremy. Keep quiet. Tell me to keep quiet or rip your legs off. Yes, you've said that. Jack Frost nipping at an open fire. It's been said many times, many ways. I did it. Beautiful, Cecil. Are they the lyrics? Yes. No, Paul, please tell us your Christmas day, because I know you're desperate to. <laughs> well, I got up every hour on the hour, just snuck around the rooms, did a little look in the bathroom, nothing there. My bedroom, nothing there, nothing at the end of my bed. For a while, then got to six o'clock. Ba-boom! Festive socks. But not socks with a festive design. One big fat sock filled with Christmas ornaments and trinkets, presents, gifts, bows, ribbons, um, trinkets, 
I said that. Presents. I said that. Uh, a Christmas cracker. A Satsuma that gets thrown at mum every year. Some shiny coins. Four nuts. A macadamia nut. Um. Um. Ooh. Oh. Look like Michael Jackers on. Chamel. <laughs> And you smell like one tool. Piss off now, you mother. F it's a zombie bum. It's a zombie bum. It's a zombie bum. That's Jack Frostington. Just die, you son of a bitch. Um, so as I say, I sat, I sat with mother and father. Pretty sure they fell asleep. Um, is that true, Cecil? We were never awake, Paul. Never awake. Bastard. Bastard. Um. And uh, I opened my presents. Like I said, the uh, post office stationery set with realistic stamps, but not actual stamps. I wonder if I could fool a postman. Whether that will work or not. I don't know, because stamps are expensive, aren't they? So. Classic! Radio thanks banter there. Talking about the price of stamps for no reason whatsoever on Christmas Day. You realise absolutely no one will be watching this on Christmas Day, Cecil. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mike Paul! Muslims, may. Ooh. Festivities. I don't think Muslims will be, will be watching this, Cecil. You just have no idea, Paul, what happens in the world. That's true, I don't, Cecil. You're right. But there's a... Let's put all this on my torso. Key one. Am I supposed to get key two? I don't know. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of the Oh, diamond chest blurt. Putting that on my diamond chest. Uh, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this, get rid of this. Sit so. No, you've done that, you don't know which was which. Which was the real ones? Teleport button! Spaff that on there, Cecil. Stop saying spaff. So I opened my stocking and then I just fell asleep in your bed, didn't I, Cecil? Well, you tried to. Bloody tried to, but I kept trumping, so you left. <clears throat> I did, I went and slept on the sofa. Right, let's read what we've got to do on quest three now. Travel to the top of Mount Nicholas and finally kill the Greens. Where's Mount St. Nicholas, the patron saint of festivity? Don't know, let's clamber up here and look for a big, tall mountain. Probably that, 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 probably that. Stupid. What's this say? Okay. Um. Ooh, I'll take the festive bridge. No, that's that's not in. That's uh, that's a Christmas tree. Ah! The jar was from uh, Star Wars. What titty? What's going on in there? Hello. Excuse me, sorry, I've made a terrible mistake. Shh, 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 shh. talking about teasers. What was that? This building. I think that's a shop. Man. So, then, I woke up about it. Oh, it's a shop. A TT. I love that. I want a sword. A pen. A pen. Santa sword. What is it? <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. Santa's boots. I can have all these. I want that. I want that. I want that. I don't want that. Get me all bound up in a... Oh, shit. In a festive item. Santa's pants. Santa's coat. Um, Santa must have an hat. Must have some shoes. 
I look festive. Well, you look festive, Tessa. Yes. So then I woke up at 11 o'clock and then we just began present frenzy. Um, I've been eyeing up a box of chocolates um, that Cecil got that I'm going to steal later. Um, and then I'm going to... What did you get for Christmas, Paul? Tell the ladies and gentlemen. I got... Um, what, what did I get, Cecil? I can't remember. It's a whole bottle of avocado to yourself. Oh, I did. Cecil, I did. That's right. That in itself is nothing remarkable. It is remarkable, Cecil. I find it remarkable to me. <sighs> I got... What did I get, Cecil? I can't remember. I don't remember you handing me anything. It was in the envelope, Paul. Oh, that was it. You gave me a bottle of Advocar. And then you said, <laughs> This is for you, my boy. And then you said, Um... Read it, and I read it. What's going on here? And it was just a bloody note saying, Please, will you be my best man at my wedding? And I was all like, Oh. Oh. Right. So, what? So, essentially, you just give me responsibility for Christmas. Yes, my boy. Oh, you bastard. 